Thank you, Jesus. There's an anointing in this house. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Grab your Bibles with me, hallelujah, and turn to 2 Samuel chapter 12. I want to greet this household of faith. I want to greet the elders, Elder Peck, Elder Kerr, all the officers in your respective places. Amen. I want to greet my wife and my children this morning, their absence, my mother and Mother Hall, Mother Harper. Special greetings to you, to our first time visitors and friends. Those that are watching us on live stream, greetings to you this morning. The presence of the Lord is surely in this house. And I know sometimes we come with a set program, but if God change the program, we have to go with what he called us to do. I want to remind the saints that uh, this Saturday that the fasting is postponed, and instead we'll be having our Easter weekend consecration, Good Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's the 15th through to the 17th. Please prepare yourself for fasting and prayer and Lord's Supper. Amen. Following the consecration, please prepare yourself for that weekend. Amen. As we seek the face of the Lord in such a time when he have died for us and we're celebrating the cross that we will take that time to spend some time with God we have in our presence sister Jennifer Gale uh, she's been with us for a while from Jamaica and she fit in so nicely she's come uh, this morning she was supposed to be up here but the Holy Ghost is leading in a different way and she will be leaving us on Tuesday back for Jamaica. So for the service, we will bless her because she have fought, came here and she fell in right with Sister Shirley and she helped to clean this church weekly. And we bless God for that because sometimes, you know, sometimes people come and they find it hard to just fit in. But she came, amen, and she just fit right in, amen. And she's there. Sister Jennifer, just wave your hand, I know. Sister Jennifer, amen. She'll be leaving us on Tuesday, amen. She'll be missed, but I know she's coming back and we'll bless her, amen, following the service as she travels safely, amen, in the hands of God back to Jamaica, amen. But I want you to turn your Bibles with me this morning as we do some instructions taken from 2 Samuel chapter 12. And I'm going to read from verses 15 through to verses 20. And you can follow, but I'm reading in the New King James Version. This story is about the death of David's son after he committed adultery with Bathsheba, him and Uriah's wife. And God told him that surely the sword will not leave your house. Amen. And then the son died. And David was mourning the loss or the illness of his son. But eventually, he got up and he started worshiping God. So this morning, I want to talk to somebody about the topic, know when to move on. You got to know when to move on. The Lord is saying that some of us are stuck in our emotions and in our past and in our mistakes and our struggles. But there comes a time when you have to snap out of it and move on. So I'll read from verses 15 for context. Uh, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became ill. David therefore pleaded with God for the child, and David fasted and went in and laid in all night on the ground. So the elders of his house arose and went to him. 
to raise him up from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. Then on the seventh day, it came to pass that the child died. On the seventh day, the child died. And the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him and he would not take heed our voice. He can't, how can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm. Verse 19 say, and, and when David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said to his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he went to his own house. Here he requested, he break his fast, and they set before him food. And he ate. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Know when to move on. Know when to move on. The Lord is speaking to somebody this morning. That you're crying and weeping over something that he has written off. You're holding on to your emotions and you're holding on to hurt. You're holding on to tears. And God is saying that there comes a time when you got to snap out of it and move on. As I was watching last week the Oscars on live television, many of us witness. An Oscar winning A class actor, Will Smith, doing something unacceptable on national television. When he slapped comedian Chris Brown in the face, Chris Rock, Chris Rock, sorry, not Chris Brown, Chris Rock, in the face. And many of us, we probably can justify or try to justify why he did it. Because we could talk about the insult and we could talk about what was happening, amen, and whatever feud they have or whatever is going on, we could try to justify it. But that still does not make a wrong right. But you know what got me? Shortly after the slap, Smith returned to the stage, but this time he went to the stage to accept his award. And during his emotional speech, uh, he quoted something that Denzel Washington uh, said to him. And he, some words of wisdom that Denzel gave him when he sat down after the incident. He said, and I quote, that what I love was what Denzel said to me a few moments ago. He said, at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. And I said, that was some powerful words of wisdom. At your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. And I heard a message coming from that TV. That sometime when we're at our highest, sometime I heard Brother Delroy preach the word, don't let down your guard. Because sometimes when we think it's peace and safety, it's when the enemy comes in and it becomes sudden destruction. I'm here to tell somebody this morning as I watch and I read the news about this good actor. Now in crisis mode, 
Amen. Trying to apologize. Amen. To Chris Rock for his action and his and and his publicist trying to do damage control because he someone could not control their emotion and their feelings in that moment. And they realize that not because you're loved by others, it does not mean that your wrong will always be accepted by others doesn't matter how much you think you're big and high and you might have great names and titles behind your name at some point you're going to be judged and there will be consequences for your action uh, church i must say not just young people and as i pause here that many times we do things because we're stuck in our emotions and we don't think about or the consequences we say things and we do things and we don't think about the aftermath. We do things to our brothers and sisters. We say things about our brothers and sisters and we don't think about the aftermath. But the Lord wants me to tell somebody this morning, amen, that there is always consequences to our action. And that's where this morning I find myself in 2 Samuel chapter 12. And as I take my time to instruct you this morning, I see where David literally find himself in a place and at a point where he was not only in trouble with God, but he was in trouble with man. He was in trouble. Because in chapter 11, we saw David, he was the king over Israel. And David found himself on the rooftop of his palace. And while he should be at battle, like the Bible says, it was a time when king would go to war. And David should be at war, leading his army in battle. But David finds himself on the roof. And the Bible, uh, not the Bible, but I hear the saying that say, the devil find work for idle hands. And David find himself on the roof, amen, of his palace and when he should be at war. And while David was up there, he saw this lady washing herself. He inquired, who is this lady? And someone, his servants told him, this is Uriah's wife. Ah, glory to God. So David knew from the beginning that this was someone's wife. And yet he sent the messengers and just for context, I'm going to go through the story. He sent the messengers and he said, go and get her. Some of us do so our sins and we're so beer face. Beer face. You know what you're doing is wrong, but you still go ahead and do it. Beer face. David send and get Bathsheba. And then he decided to spend the night with Bathsheba. While Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, is out in the battlefield fighting for his place, his kingdom, his land. But just a few months later, words came back to David. Or a few weeks later, words come back to David. Bathsheba sent word that David, I'm with child, I'm pregnant. Mm. then David heard now and tried to cover up and David sent and get Uriah off the battlefield brought Uriah back to his palace and encouraged Uriah to go home and to sleep with his wife but Uriah was so faithful that Uriah slept at the palace gate he would not go home because he's like, how can I go home and enjoy myself while my fellow man is out fighting? Uriah slept at the gate and David realized that Uriah would not go home. And the servants told David that Uriah slept at the gate. He did not go home to his wife. So David come up with a further plot. David wrote his death sentence. And gave it to him in his hand. Mm, mighty God. Wickedness. Wickedness. God, what are you saying? He gave 
Uriah his own death sentence written and say bring it to Job the leader of the army and in the letter it says that put Uriah at the front of the battle the hottest part of the battle withdraw yourself from him and allow him to die let the enemy kill him holy ghost my god my god i didn't come with this part but the holy ghost somebody is conspiring wickedness and pulling back wickedness and utter wickedness Holy Ghost power. But God says, God said, let me move on. God says, no sin will go unpunished. You might not commit the act yourself, but you're a platter to the act. If you plot it, the gallus will be yours. God, God, God. Anyway, God sent back Nathan down. God sent Nathan down to David. And Nathan went down with a parable. And a parable is the truth disguised in a story. And, and, and Nathan says, the prophet Nathan says to David, David, there was a rich man, Holy Ghost, with exceeding many flocks and herd. And he said, but there was a little poor man, <laughs> save with his one weeny lamb, <laughs> that he brought up and he nourished. And he said, but there came a traveler, our guest. And he said, the rich man took a spear, his own lamb, and took the one little weenie lamb. And he killed it and prepared it for his guests. And David, being the king, was furious when he heard Nathan speaking. And he said, Nathan, as the Lord liveth, this person, this man, shall surely be put to death. But when God have a plan for you, mighty God of Daniel, no devil in hell, ah, God can derail that plan. You may mess up, you may do some stuff, but God will still give you your consequences, your punishment. But if God has a plan for your life, it doesn't matter. David says, Holy Ghost, ah, that guy, he must die. And Nathan said, David, you are the white, the man. Many of us like to point fingers. But when my son looked at me the other day, out of nowhere, he said, Daddy, when you point one finger, four points back at you. And he started moving his fingers around, trying to let less finger point back at him. But I want to tell somebody, you can move your fingers around, but when you point one, four is coming back at you. Be careful! Be careful. So we see David said he must, that man must die. But God had a plan for David. Mercy. Mercy. Holy Ghost. You see, if God was like man, he wipe out David right there. Because he pronounced the death sentence as the king. You see, you see something that I learned that when we say there is life and death in the power of the tongue, do you know that if you go back to the Old Testament, it's referring to the king? Because when the king 
speak or spoke a decree. It goes out and it cannot return void. And if he said you're going to die, why do you think they had to throw the Hebrew boys in the fire? Because the king spoke it. Anyway, be careful of how we speak. And the death sentence that we pass. Be careful. But, 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 but David now finds himself in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Because Nathan said, you are the man. You are the man. You took Uriah's wife. And you thought you did a perfect cover up. But God have seen everything that you did. You might have done it in private. But God said the sword will live in your house publicly. And here now in the scripture, in this part of the chapter, we saw the first sign of the sword in David's house. The son that was born to him and Bathsheba. God struck the son with a deadly sickness. My God, the Bible says that David, for seven days, he lied down on the floor where the child is. He went and fasted and purr, sackcloth and ashes, begging God for forgiveness. Some of us need the heart of David. Some of us are, we mess up so bad. We wipe our mouth, we wipe our face, and we behave like nothing. But we need to ask God for that repentive heart. We need to ask God for that repentive heart. But David, as he mourned, walk with me through those stories. David mourned. On the seventh day, David saw the servants as they were whispering whispering and David perceived that something was wrong and David said to them is the child dead they were scared to answer but they answered the king and said yes the child is dead and you thought that David would put his hands on his head and start mourning even more but David did something that they didn't understand he got up from the floor. He washed himself. Anoint himself. And then he went into the house of the Lord to worship. I don't know who this morning is going through double trouble. And you feel like your only place is to stay down. God said it's time to get up. It's time to get up. First thing I want to tell somebody is when life hits rock bottom, get up and worship God because God still has a plan for you. Somebody came into the house this morning or you're watching us on live stream and the devil is playing with your mind. The devil is making you think that you're somehow forgotten by God because you've made some bad decision. I know there is consequences for a decision but yet you have fallen short. You have messed up and you're here this morning. Oh glory to God. Feeling shame. Lying down. Feeling like you've hit rock bottom feeling like life bottom has fallen out on you but God said get up and worship it's time to get up get up off your face and praise me anyhow get up you're allowing the enemy to hold you down for too long and that's why I went through the story because it was bad what David did it was awful but some people have a tendency of holding what you have done in the past over you but God said this morning they can't hold you down if I have a purpose over your life there's a purpose over your life don't let get up and worship me anyhow I have a plan for you. 
I have a plan for you. I know you feel like you've hit rock bottom. I know you feel like things are not going well. I know you've been crying over your failures, over your past. I know you feel like nobody has forgiven you. But let me ask you this. Is it man's forgiveness you're seeking or is it God's forgiveness? Get up off your feet. Rise up from your ashes and worship God. If God set you free, no one can hold you down. Let nobody hold you down for your mistakes of your past. It's your past, my brother. Your past, it's behind you. Not saying it's right. Clearly not saying what you did was right. But your past, it's your past. God said, get up and move on. I'm here to serve the devil notice. Been weighing down the people of God for too long. Every sin that you've done from the second you were born uh, until now it's flashing back before your face. Even after you've been down in the water uh, and God has washed away your sins, uh, it's still flashing before you. You can't worship. Uh, yes, you've messed up. Uh, yes, you've done some wrong. Uh, but God is saying, uh, if I have forgiven you and you have forgiven yourself, get up and worship. Uh, let them talk. Uh, let them watch you. But worship God. Uh, your praise, your breakthrough, it's in your worship. Don't be hung down. Don't be burdened down with what people say. Worship God anyhow. <laughs> the next thing I want to tell you as the Holy Ghost speaks to me. It said you got to learn to move beyond your emotions and embrace your future blessings. You got to learn how to move beyond your emotions. You don't know what God has in store for you. Yes, you may feel like this is so shameful. And yes, it may come with some shame. It's just natural. But if you get stuck in your emotions and forget the God that you serve, if you don't release those emotions and said it's for God I live and for God I die, if you don't release those emotions and said I gotta let go of these hurt and these pain, you think it's only fornication and adultery? Some of us is hanged down with lies that was told on you. Ah, glory to God. They whipped you with their tongue and it caused you to be hanged down. But God is saying this morning, release yourself from the burdens that weigh you down. Allow God to lift you up. Holy Ghost. Ah, David went through his emotions. David went through that period where he was on the floor lying down, prostrate, hoping that God would change stuff. But can I tell somebody, you can't weep over what God has said. It's done. It's over. God said it's done. And you're still weeping over it. You can't weep over what he's saying. It's done. At some point you have to get up and realize that if this is the will of God, it's not like God didn't tell him. God told David. But David was praying just in case God would spear the child. But God is saying what you did was wrong, David. And there's a consequence for it. I know you love this child. But there's a consequence for it. So what I'm saying to you this morning, although sometimes you have to face the consequences, it does not mean that you get stuck in your emotions. It doesn't mean that you get buried in self-pity. Because sometimes we allow self-pity to block your future blessing. You tell yourself that you're not worthy. 
You tell yourself that how can God use me? You tell yourself how you've messed up. You blame yourself with everything that have happened in your past. Why your husband left? Why your wife left? You start finding reasons to blame yourself. Why your children left church? You start finding reason why they don't like me. You start finding reasons for everything. But God said let go of those emotions and allow me to occupy your heart. Allow me to take full control of your inner man. Because when God is in the vessel, you can smile at your storm. I know you're going through. I know you've been there. But can I say that some things just have to die for some to flourish or live. Can you imagine if everything lived? There is no death cycle. Every person that was born on this earth is still alive. Every seed that was sown is still growing. Overcrowding. And the Holy Ghost is saying, that's what's happening inside for some. You're holding on to too much. Holding on to too much. And nobody is diminishing your hurt. Your mistake. But God said at some point, you got to know when to get up and rise. As I was looking at this, the Holy Ghost impressed me. He said, you cannot live in your sorrows of the past and enjoy the blessing of your future. You cannot live in the sorrows of your past and enjoy the blessings of your future. You'll always be sorrowful. You'll always be crying. But the Holy Ghost is saying, there comes a time when you've got to release yourself. Wake up, Brother Archie. Wake up. Last point I want to give to someone this morning. That that which is to come will be greater and more powerful than that which you have lost. Sometimes we get stuck in transition. Sometimes we get stuck at a place where God is saying, I need you to move on. I have a plan for you. The, futures are, the future is looking bright. But if you're stuck on the floor lying there and crying and won't move, won't eat, won't worship me. If you don't release those emotions of the past, then you're going to get stuck. And God is saying, I cannot afford you to be stuck in your emotions. I can't afford you to be stuck in your past. I can't afford you to be stuck in unforgiveness. I can't afford you to be stuck in your hurt. You got to realize at some point that you got to get up and worship God in spite of the circumstances. You got to worship him in spite of what's going on in and around you. In spite of the childhood trauma. In spite of the troubles. In spite of the lies. In spite of, oh hallelujah. In spite of what you've been through. Though the ship may be rocking and your sails may be torn. But you shall find rest in the eye of the storm. David, David, David recognized that now that the child is dead, there's no need for me to lie here on the floor and just cry. God is saying, I closed some doors because I have so many more to open and you're still crying over the shut door. Uh, he's saying I took some stuff uh, to release you from the problems and the burdens that you were about to face but you're still crying ah that is your you who is the one that I rescue you are the one that I brought in safe on the other side don't cry over something that I already dismiss and release 
still crying over something that God says move on still crying over things of your past I don't know who I'm speaking to and I'm not insensitive because I know sometimes this past hurt ah, glory to God don't tell me not to cry because it hurt but I'm saying that even in your tears you gotta remember your God you gotta remember the God that you serve and you gotta remember that even in your trouble he's still God he has a plan for your life your troubles cannot derail God plan your problems cannot derail the plan that God has for you so David David when he looked at his trouble he got up he went into the house of the Lord and it says that he penned Psalm 51 David penned Psalm 51 he said have mercy upon me O God according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies he said blot out my transgression God Almighty, there ever before me. I don't want to see it blotted out, Jesus. Uh, somebody need to lift your hands and say, Blot it out, God. It's been blinding me, it's been blocking me. Blot it out. He said, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins forever. Knowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before thee. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and come short. Ah, God Almighty. Ah, behold. I was shaping in iniquity. Uh, glory to God. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold thou uh, desire truth uh, in the inward part. Uh, and in the hidden part. Uh, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me uh, with hyssop. Uh, and I shall be clean. Uh, wash me Jesus. Uh, and I shall be whiter than snow. Uh, I know I messed up. Uh, I know I've fallen short. Uh, I know God as I'm before you this morning but somebody say wash me wash me wash me wash me and I shall be whiter than snow make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice hide not thy face from my sin and blot out all all my iniquity he said create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence and take not your holy spirit from me but restore but re but restore it Lord God I'm crying but restore it God I'm weak but restore me God I'm broken but restore me I'm asking you to restore me restore me again restore the joy of my salvation allow me to lift up holy hands one more time I know you have a plan I know you have a purpose allow me to rejoice he went and sought the Lord that's why he went down in the house he sought the Lord restore me somebody feeling broken Holy Ghost your mess is still coming up before you. My God Almighty. David acknowledged his sin. But when we talk about, when I said that your future blessing will be great, and this is the first time God acknowledged Bathsheba as David's wife. In verses 24, of 2 Samuel. If you put up verse 24 and 25. While they were both grieving. David went. The Bible said. He went down to Bathsheba. And there you see the Bible said. And he comforted his wife. 
All through the chapter it says Uriah's wife. But now that Uriah is dead and God is looking on the future. God said now Bathsheba it's your wife now. You've taken her. It's your wife. He went into her and they bore a second son. And they called his name Solomon. If you know the story of Solomon, the wisest man, the one that had to build the Lord's house. I know that the first thing that was springing died, but that was your doing. God is saying now, I'm turning things around. Now that it's in line with my word, I'm going to bless it. I couldn't bless your first mess because that was your mess. Now that you're in line with me and I have a plan and a future for you, I'm going to bless you with, Sam, uh, with Samuel, with Solomon. You see, even after God blessed him with Solomon, God sent back the same prophet in verse 25. The same one that condemned his doing, Nathan, earlier. God spoke to Nathan and sent him back down there and said, go back to David and tell him now. He, he has a son and I want you to call his name Jedidiah. I'm changing his name because it means blessings of God or favor of God. I have a work for you, but I cannot just call it what you want to be called. I can't use you how you want to be used, but I have to do it in my way, God says. And the first time you might have messed up, but this time God said, I'm going to change everything to my glory. That's how David knew that this time God was pleased with him. Because God sent back Nathan and tell him to go tell David. Church, you cannot mess up God's plan. You can run, but you can't hide from God. If God is calling you to his work, we could run, but we can't hide. And we cannot just do our own thing and think that that's okay. You remember Samuel as I close? When they asked for a king, like everybody else, God gave them a king because they were crying for a king. They wanted a king. And God gave them Saul. But then Saul messed up. And then we find Samuel, the same thing, stuck in his emotions. He was crying over Samuel, over Saul for so long. Samuel was crying over Saul, crying over Saul, crying over Saul. Till God had to say, how long will you weep for that which I have already rejected move on move on I don't know this morning who is stuck 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 in your past stuck in your mistake I'm here to tell you that I ain't condoning your sin and sin is sin and it will have its reward but there comes a time brothers and sisters that you got to get up and say, God, I have sinned against you. I have acknowledged my sin and have fallen short. The devil is now using repentance and blocking the mind of God people. Because people now are not truly repenting. Because they go, if I come and they know my past. They won't accept me. They're going to say, look at the fornicator. Look at the adulterer. That baby is out of an adulterous relationship. 
God is saying this morning as he turns and twists. That we got to be careful how we pass judgment and death sentences. Because I have purpose for every one of my children. And the key is that you repent and get up. I heard somebody say that if you're down and you're falling, the key is that you don't stay down. I heard Brother Omar with that the other night. Don't stay down because a sinner, a saint is just a sinner who fall down but get back up. I also hear somebody says, when you're down, try to look up. Because if you can look up, you can get up. If you can look up, you can get up. Let us not block someone else from coming to God because of our self-righteous behavior. Repentance is of the heart. And God is saying that there is broken people sitting among you. Broken! Broken! Holy Ghost. But Vanji, they can't move. Held down and stuck. But can I say to you this morning, God will never condone with your sin. But he's a God of repentance and mercy and grace. And if you sin, there is consequences for it. So don't think that God is going to smile with it. That is why he said, David, I can't allow that. I can't bless it. But I have a plan for you. Some of us mess up and want God to bless the mess. The mess. God's not going to approve your mess. And don't look for him to approve your mess. Because it won't happen. God is a just God. But he also said you cannot get stuck in your past and your sin. When I have forgiven you and say get up. Don't stay in it. Don't get stuck in it. Leave your past. Leave your past behind. If you're going to repeat it, use it as a testimony. For someone else to be saved. And for God's sake, when somebody testifies of their brokenness, leave it in the sanctuary. Leave it in the house of God. Don't take it with you. Don't repeat it. It's for God. It's not for you. It's not for you. We pray with the person. We rejoice with the person. We intercede with the person. But I dare you to take it and pass a judgment. Holy Ghost, this morning I'm here to serve the devil. Notice that this house God is calling his people to repentance and to wholeness. And I dare you to use the past and block someone from moving on where God wants to take them higher. I dare you to use someone past and block them from the move of God. Now I can tell you as your pastor that if you're wrong, you're wrong. And if you have to be punished or disciplined for your sin or mistake, however you want to put it, you have to have principles. The house of the Lord cannot just move any and anyhow. There must be principles. And if there's principles and rules and laws, it does not mean that we're going to use that to bound you. But there is rules. You cannot do every and anything and still walk up in the house of the Lord and say I'm in full control. Because God will not tolerate that. But I dare someone when somebody truly repents with their broken heart and say God I'm here before you broken for you to use it and block that one God said no 
this is my house I'm calling I'm calling them from the east west north and south and I'm bringing them in I'm bringing them to you I want you to comfort them guide them protect them keep them under your wings until I come again And the level of discipline that I would impose on an elder or minister is totally different from what I would do to a newborn child. Because those who know better do better. God is saying, Zion, this is my house of healing and purr. This is my house of restoration. This is my house of restoring the broken. Ah, oh, glory to God. He said, I'm calling in. I'm calling in the backsliders. I'm calling in those that are broken. I'm calling those from the prison bars. I'm calling them in. And I'm putting them to sit right beside you. They will be your neighbor. They will be your friend. You got to guide them until Christ is forming them. You cannot just despise them and send them back out. God said, no. If David followed what people said about him if David followed how people would look on him he would have never got up from the floor never he'd have stayed there people will try to keep you in a position some people love to see people cry and mourn you know they, they, they rejoice and you see her you see him you see him? I know that's when the ball found their one. How can you take pleasure in someone's hurt? In someone's pain? In someone's suffering? The church needs to learn how to release and help people to grow. Not condone sin. Don't leave here think sin is condoned in any manner. But we got to learn how to restore. You got to learn how to know how to move forward. And church, don't let the devil, don't let the devil fool you at your highest point. Like Will Smith, or like Denzel said to Will, it's at your highest point. That the enemy seeks to destroy you. Stand with me in this house. He makes all things new for you and me. God says that you got to know when it's time to move on. You cannot live in your past. Some people have messed up so bad or so badly that they cannot forgive themselves. And they're looking for a kind word. Because they're hurting. They're looking for a kind word. How do I get up? How do I get up? But instead of you trying to guide them in getting up, you help them to go down further. God is looking for some David that will repent open up before him say against you and against you only have I sinned and come short but God is saying this morning not only that you're going to call his name Solomon but Jedidiah beloved of the Lord blessings from the Lord God said I'm going to turn things around What you thought was the end, God said it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Lift your hands in this house. We all have fallen short. We all have messed up somehow, somewhere. But God said even as long as it stays in your past 
let it stay in your past don't bring it in your future don't bring it with you into your future sorry to say some things just have to die some relationship just have to be cut off he's not going to allow you to continue with that relationship it has to be cut off because if it continues to spring it's going to hinder you from going where God wants you to go this morning we repent before God like David I don't know who came in this morning and blaming themselves for mistakes of the past you're searching Holy Ghost you're searching you're searching I'm closing you're searching and you just can't forgive yourself said I should have known I should have seen this coming I knew this was gonna happen you see yourself sitting down in holy actions you see yourself held down by your own emotions but you're calling on God this morning and he sent me to tell you that it's time to move on and move forward said rise up from the ash rise up from the morning wash yourself dress yourself and worship God said I'm restoring I'm restoring I'm changing hearts I'm changing you inward outward I'm changing you I'm calling you for my purpose ah you have been in the pit hallelujah but now I'm calling you to testify about the pit you've been behind bars and now I'm calling you to testify about the bars ah glory to God I'm calling you so that you will help somebody else not to go behind the bars I'm calling you because I have a purpose for you don't sit in the ashes don't sit in self pity but rise up and wash you have been there you've been hurt you have been there and God is saying because you have been there I want you to use it to guide someone else and to save someone else from going there but I can't do it if you're all self-righteous I'm calling people it's my end time I want my people to come back but how can I move forward if I'm stuck in my emotions if I'm stuck in my past forgive yourself brothers forgive yourself sisters rise up God loves you he cares about you yes he put an end to some things but he has greater things in store for you try those tears Get up! Get up! Get up! Seven days long enough. It's done. Is the child dead? Yes, sir. Yes, King. It's dead. Get up! It's over. God has put an end to that. said I have a plan for you I'm calling you into ministry I'm calling you to do much more but you've been held down and burdened down and been suffocated I don't know who I'm speaking to whether you're online or you're in person but God is saying it's time don't leave this place don't leave the hearing under the anointing of God without releasing your emotions you're tied in your emotion you can't see yourself worthy you can't see yourself doing any good you can't see yourself of any good God said that's not of me I have something for you I want to use you I want to guide you oh Jesus Holy Ghost power we stand
stand before you in awe that my past is in my past and though the bottom feels like it fall out sometimes God Almighty you still have a plan I gotta learn how to embrace and release my emotions so I can move into my future I gotta learn how to worship and not let the hurt of my past block my present blessing don't get stuck in your past praise God praise God